Well, the latest now on the first ever prosecution of a person under Utah's 2012 ad gag law. Prosecutors have now dropped all charges against 25 year old Amy Mayer. Mayer faced a Class B misdemeanor charge for allegedly interfering with agriculture operations when she filmed practices taking place at the Draper Slaughterhouse. On her blog, she described seeing cows struggle to be free, piles of horns, flesh being spewed from the chute on the side of the building, and sick cattle being carted away as if they were rubble. But after dominating headlines of publications across the country, the case was dropped. So is this a win for animal rights advocates? Well, earlier I was joined by Will Potter. He's an independent journalist and the author of Green is the New Red. And I asked him if the latest news out of Utah suggests anything as far as ad gag laws go moving forward. I think it really reflects that the biggest way and most effective way to fight these uh, bills around the country is just like the most effective way to expose abuses on factory farms, and that's to shine a light on it and expose what's happening. Um, what happened in Utah is as soon as news of this prosecution broke out, people were outraged. I mean, it made it literally went viral and got hundreds of thousands of views, and just 24 hours later, the prosecutors dropped all charges. And to me, that really reflects the state of this legislation. The industry wants it on the books, but when it comes to enforcing it, uh, I think there's going to be a difficult road ahead. So let's break this down into two parts. First of all, let's talk about this case specifically. I understand that this case is a little bit more unique in the fact that she was actually on public property. Do you think that the prosecution used that as an excuse to, to drop these charges in the midst of unpopular press? Absolutely. I mean, if you look at Utah's law, which is still overly broad and very vague, it doesn't include this type of activity, like filming from the side of the road or filming from public property. Um, it specifically says you have to be trespassing, among other things. So the law clearly could not apply. I mean, this was a losing battle. There's no way that Amy Meyer could have been convicted in court for this. But the real danger is the chilling effect this has. I mean, prosecutions like this, being arrested for, uh, being prosecuted for filming from the side of the road, road makes other people afraid and that's why these bills are so dangerous. Well and let's talk about the other caveat to this. Uh, the owner of that meatpacking factory was actually the mayor of this Utah town. He is currently. So isn't that a conflict of interest? Absolutely but it's the same conflict of interest we're seeing around the country. In Iowa the very first ag gag law that was passed in the last legislative session the sponsors all had close ties to the agriculture industry. We're seeing a similar pattern that with that in Pennsylvania and Tennessee which is now considered a veto. Industry is in uh, close ties with politicians on this, and that really shouldn't make everyone pause. And how do you think the media actually played into this? Do you think that this case would have gone through had the media and, and these negative headlines actually come out about this case? I think that's very clear. I mean, if this media attention hadn't been there, the prosecutors would have moved forward. I don't think she would have been convicted. I don't think that would have been possible, hopefully. Um, but she could have been tied up in the court system for a year, a year and a half, going through this process, having it way over her you know, every day, facing potential jail time and fines. Um, and I think that exposing this and writing about it helped uh, shine a light on that. But let's talk about the bigger picture here. Now, dropping this case is obviously good news for Amy Mayer, but is it dropping uh, this case, does it necessarily make for good for the battle overall when it comes to these ad gag laws? I mean, obviously, it shines some light, but in a couple of months, the story is going to be forgotten, right? Well, and the law is still on the books. I mean, success, you know, it was a victory to have this prosecution dropped, but the Utah ad gag law still exists. So does Iowa and Missouri and other states. And right now, the Tennessee governor is considering uh, signing another piece of legislation. Pennsylvania, more legislation is about to be introduced. North Carolina, these bills are still a threat. I think what Utah shows is the importance of fighting them tooth and nail and exposing what's actually happening. And when that, once that happens, the public overwhelmingly opposes them. Well, let's talk about all of those other states that you just brought up. This is something that isn't uh, contracting, it's expanding, right? Well, and it's expanding in unique ways. I mean, the industry has been met with a severe backlash against this legislation that criminalizes photography and video. And what we're seeing now are new bills being introduced that don't even mention photography and also don't even mention factory farms and agriculture. In North Carolina, the bill is called the Commerce Protection Act. It includes every industry, not just farming. I mean, this is people who are working on auto assembly lines or tobacco plants. It includes all workers. And what do you think that this says about the current state of industry in this country? 
I think what it really reflects is that the biggest threat to business as usual for any corporation in any industry is an informed public. And that's why the industry, that's why the agriculture industry is trying to shut down opposition and keep consumers in the dark. All right, Will Potter, thank you so much for joining us. That was Will Potter, independent journalist and author of Green is the New Red.